Hello, good day, and welcome back. So today we're gonna to be looking at an enhanced version of our mem store. We can call it mem store version two. Now we implemented version one and it was pretty nice. We can store things in it and so on. But along the way, we found a few deficiencies, right? Uh, we weren't using too many standard error messages. And so we fixed some of those in the previous videos. And there's some other things that we can do on it with it because um, as we'll see, um, it, it has a last to be desired. So let's just go back and look at where, where we are so far. So in the previous version, we had these, we start off with these methods here. Uh, we had a stringer, we had a writer interface, reader interface, and then we could check and see if it's empty. You know, basically nothing's been written to it. And then how much data has been written to it. And then um, we added a close and then a way to check if it's closed. And we added close um, because we wanted the ability that if you're um, writing to it, um, you can prevent somebody from reading. Um, if, if you want to stop, prevent someone from using it anymore, either for reading or writing, just like a file, because this is like a file like in memory storage. So we had the ability of being able to say that it's closed for, for the changes in terms of writing, or even if it's closed, you can't read from it. And the other thing is we want to be able to signal that when you got to the end of it, because uh, we had to keep track of where our sort of read pointer is so that you could read, 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 and then um, know where you're reading from. Write wasn't a problem because we were always appending stuff to our current buffer and creating a new buffer. So in a way, we're indirectly um, keeping track of a write pointer if you want to think of it that way. But reading, we weren't keeping track of a read pointer. And so when we got to the end, well, of course, we return an error message because now we know where to end. And then we also have the option of um, whether we should close. And then we also introduce a reset method, um, which I do not have here. Um, so we also introduce reset. And that too. Um, so let's do highlights. I think bold and green. So that was the other three methods we sort of added. And then now we're going to add open. And the reason we add open, not only because this is file like storage, really, but let's just think about it for a second. Now, why is our open taken int? Well, let's re imagine that right now you can create a mem store object and just write, write, write. You could sit there in a loop and just write a ton of data to it. And what the problem there is someone could be, um, you know, uh, what's I say, uh, malicious and just try to write a ton of data into memory. And since we allocate it and write it to memory, they can start consuming a lot of RAM and then the operating system would get sluggish as a whole as it tried to allocate memory to our program and the rest of the system could get slow. And eventually we'd have to start paging this memory use um, in memory data to file and write into a file system is really slow. And so you might say, well, when I have a file, I don't ever have to specify how much data I want to write to the file. Well, that's because your hard drive is a lot bigger than, you know, how much memory you have at your, your RAM. And so you want to be a little bit more cautious of how you use RAM versus hard drive. I'll give you an example. In my system here, I think I have like 16 gigs of RAM but my hard drive is like 512. Some of you might have um, hard drives that is one terabyte or two terabytes, right? Uh, or even more. And so, um, yes, you don't have to worry so much about the file uh, being big. Um, and so definitely we want to be able to introduce a way so somebody wouldn't be able to write malicious code too easily. And so we're going to introduce an open where you can pass a number saying how big you want how much data bytes you, you want maximum to be used. So now we'll have to keep track of um, this size that's requested at the time when you open. So the thing we want is once you create a mem store, by default, it should be closed already when you create it. And so uh, when you start try to write it when you create it, it shouldn't allow you to because you haven't specified how, specify how big um, your maximum size buffer internally. And so you have to say open and then you specify, um, you know, that number we could do is in 16, um, 64, sorry, but we're going to stick with this. And since int is going to be zero or more, um, we, we should use u int. Um, and that means our size also should be, uh, u int. Okay. Um, to return because it's never going to be negative. Um, 
No, we, we really don't have to change it. I mean, we can we can leave it as int and stuff, even though, because if you think of the linked operator, it's never gonna return a negative number, but still it's int. So all right, let's keep saying simple and just leave it as int. Um, it can prevent us from having to do some casting from when we combine things with linked. Okay, so let's go and implement. Now, why does this return an error? Returns an error because if it's already open and you try to open it again, then it should return an error. It shouldn't allow you to call open with let's say 10 and then you call open again with 20 or smaller number. You can only call open once. So we'll have to go add our open method and change things a little bit. So let's get to the code. So here I um, I just want to show that how my package directory for this user I'm using is empty. Um, well, not quite empty. Um, I should remove um, whatever is in there, then uh, star, and so, yes, so if I do ls now, yep, it's empty now, okay, and then what I want to do is watch this directory, so I'm going to watch this directory to see when a package is added there, and so here I am in our project directory, and I'm going to do cp minus r 0909, and then create section 10, and then I'm gonna cd into section 10. And then when we look at ls, we do CLI and MS. Okay, so I'm gonna open my code editor here, of course. And then um, I'm going to cd into CLI and we're gonna run code from here. So I'm gonna do go run main, for example, from here. And um, this is from our IO ex our example. So now we're going to be working on straight um, mem store version 2. Right, that's what we're working on. And so, what did we say? Well, we, we're looking at mem store. Well, first of all, let's change this. We don't, we're not using this package, we're using from um, 10, so we should change that for sure. Um, and da -da -da. We're looking here at MS Go. So what is our operations? Well, the operations we had um, are these guys. We had them defined before, but then we added some new operations, right? Uh, we added um, some operations that we did not implement here, which was reset and close, right? So we should definitely put, our, put those in our interface. And so this is a power gain of how things can be done in Go, where you are free to add methods to a object and you know we still implemented this interface can remember to implement an interface you just need to implement the functions defining that interface it's just that now our interface is sort of lagging um, behind in our mem store in that our mem store had more methods implemented but we could correct that by just adding those methods here. so we had reset which didn't take anything um, we had close um, which also didn't take any um, up parameter or return anything is because if you want to close whether that's already closed um, no big deal um, so our reset um, we return an error because if it's closed and you try to reset it then that should definitely give you an error we don't want to reset something that um, thing so we can do err and then error interface okay and then now the new method we're gonna add is the open interface right so open int and then again err and error and i have way too many r's here and so i'm gonna re rearrange this a little bit and i'm gonna say i want it to look more like this reading from top down um you know the first thing you want to do is to be able to open and possibly close things um maybe you, as an example you can create something and just print out um, without even being able to use it. You can print out um, some detail about it, see um, you know what it's about, what information is stored there, and then um, you know, uh, yeah, it really doesn't matter. Um, but um, you know, you can read and write to it, and then um, possibly check the size, check check if it's empty, and then be able to reset it. Okay, so again, the order of interface doesn't matter. It's not like a struct where the order fields might matter if you're trying to copy, let's say, a name type with an unnamed type. That doesn't matter. So here we're tracking if it's closed. Um, one of the things you might want to do is instead, because if we have this 
um, field called is closed. And so when you create a new mem store, it, the default value, the initial value is going to be false. So this implies that it's open when you create it. That's not what we want. We want to ensure that when you create it, it is closed. And so we should write changes to is open instead. And so I'm going to undo that. I'm going to right click and say rename symbol and we call it is open. Okay. And huh, sorry, uh, should I press an escape is open and change that. And then this is going to be bold. So is open is going to be false by default. Okay. Um, now we have mem size, blah, blah, blah. And let's, okay. Start adding some functions here. Um, so the first one we want to add is open. Let's just say, and so I'm going to go here, say new and go open that go. And notice how, because we have separated these things into different files, it also write these nice little functions, right? So we have a receiver, we need a pointer to a mem store, and then we talk about open and we take a int size of int and we return an error if you do multiple open. And so here we want to do is check and see if is open r that is open if it's open is true then we don't want to open again so we're going to return um you know um a new error saying you know it's like invalid operation or something um invalid state operation so return erors from the errors package that new and then we're going to say invalid operation already open right good so that's one the second thing is okay assume that it is closed we don't want to open it multiple times if it's already had because it could have been open and closed so the only other thing that allows the test if it was open and now closed is if the um, size that we're tracking for a buffer is greater than zero right so let's go back to this and we need to keep track of um, not the read offset, but what our capacity is, right? And so capacity is int, right? This is maximum capacity. So that's the max. So that's the capacity, right? So max, maximum. Come on, I can't spell. Stored. All right. So now when we go back to open here, we can check and see. So again, the default value, once you create a mem store object, this is going to be zero. So if we ever change it, um, all we want to be able to know is that the user doesn't pass a value that is, you know, less than zero. So we want to make sure that if n is less than zero, that's an invalid value. So we're going to return errors that uh, errors that new and we say invalid parameter. Expected n greater than zero. OK, not even equals to zero because it doesn't make sense to us to write create a buffer with either negative size or zero. You can't use it, so you might as well not create a buffer. So uh, a mem store object. So we're not going to accept that. Now, if it's closed and n is greater than zero, right? Because this is going to just see if n is less than or equals to zero, actually. That's what we want to do. Um, less than or equals to zero is return invalid parameter expected n to be greater than zero. And then now we want to check and see if this capacity was already set. Again, since we're always going to start off with this being closed, it's now it is going to be able to write anything in it um, without first being able to open it. So if this is really the first time, then if, um, you know, R that capacity is, um, you know, greater than zero, then um, we cannot reopen this because we are, it means that somebody we, we previously called open. And so that's not allowed. So return errors that new open already called. Okay. 
So we can say invalid operation open already called. And so after this, everything is peachy. So now we can say r.capacity is equals to n. And of course, we have to set it open now. So we say is opened is equals to true. And then we could return nil, no error. OK? So that seems to take care of our open function. Now, let's go to our close function now. So this is the mirror one of open. So if it's if we call close, we don't need to check if it's closed because it was previously closed and you call and close again, big deal. Multiple close, no problem. So this is call and close, which means you don't set open to true, you set it to false. And the only reason this was this way is because we had the is open before, and so hence why we said it's true. All right, next one. So open and close are already done. Um, next one we want to do is let's do something um, with, why am I not able to scroll down? Oh, string. So here's our stringer. And so far, we've been showing if this thing is closed, but now we have to change this to is open. And um, maybe we might want to put show the capacity. So um, here's a buffer that's been helpful, pretty handy to be able to see the buffer. So what we're gonna do is we can go to a new line and then tab in a little bit and then show the buffer. But here we're gonna show capacity. Uh, let's put the capacity. Um, so we have the type. Um, so let's do this. Um, so mem store and then we can do is open true and then we'll do capacity and percent V and that. So we're doing R that is open um, first and then the next one is before the size we're doing R that capacity. And then come on. Okay. All right. So that should take care of our sprint or stringer function. So we have close, we have open stringer and then let's do one we're hiding running from. Let's look at write. So when it comes to writing, um, you just go to writing. If this is open, well, no, if it's not open, if it's not open, then we should return that to this is a closed pipe. Okay, remember, we're implementing some of our standard error message that we already have, right? Closed pipe is an error used for read or write operation on a closed pipe. Well, it just closed um, IO um, thing. So we're going to return that. And then, of course, if they try to write, we're going to do length of the current P buffer. And um, let's see. Well, we now have to take into account the fact that they just can't write as much as they want, but they have to write in accordance with our capacity. So we have to keep. So one way of doing this is to say, well, we can write as much data, let's say, um, our buffer size or the remaining space we have in our buffer is 10 bytes and somebody tried to write 11 bytes. We could write the 10 bytes and then return that we only wrote 10 of your 11 bytes and then there was an error. We couldn't write all of it, right? So that might allow us to do something like a short write it means that a write accepted fewer bytes than requested but failed to return a split or to return explicit error. So um, we could do something like that. But what I would prefer to do is I would prefer that if somebody asks us to write some bytes and we can't accept all of it, we should let them know that we didn't accept any and we have a full buffer or insufficient space, right? Or too much data specified. So we have length here of P, how much byte data they've given us, and we can also get length of our buffer here. So let's call length P. Um, da -da 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 let me rename this and I say rename symbol and I call it link P. And then we can also do um, length of buff, right? Colon equals to um, this guy here and then length of buff. Okay. All right. So what am I doing? So I have the length of how much data to write, how much data we already have. And so what I want to do is check if length of buffer plus length of P, or if those two numbers 
if it's less than equal, which means if I were to add the, the data, the bytes in P to my current buffer, would I go over our capacity? So if this is less than or equals to the R that capacity, then we can um, write the data. So in other words, if it's greater than our capacity, then we can write it. So we check in for if things would fail, right? And so in that case, we're going to return that we didn't accept any bytes and we're going to say errors that new and we're going to say um, too much data or something like that. All right? Something like that. You know, you be creative with your error message. You can check. So you could determine whether you want to use, reuse this short write. The only part I didn't reason I didn't return the short write is because this last part that says um, fail to return an explicit error. Actually, as a matter of fact, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna use short write. Let's just use short write because th that comes pretty much close enough to the fact that well, we didn't accept any data actually. So we we, we didn't accept fewer data than specified. So. Well, in a way, we did. Yes, yeah, zero. We accepted zero. That's fewer. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So let's do the standard error. So I owe that error um, short right. Okay. All right. And so, if we pass this point, then we can actually put the data in. So then we make up a new buffer that is, you know, the length um, to a, a to that we will be able to store um, both um, things. And now we copy them. So all this remains the same. So that's all good. Um, there's another way, since we know what the buffer size is going to be, if we wanted to, in open, we could just allocate a buffer of that length, and then we never have to reallocate every time we do a write. The pros and cons, and again, if you're doing this professionally, you're going to want to think about it and discuss it with your team. If you're expecting to do a lot of writes into your buffer, you probably wouldn't want to do this reallocation all the time. However, if you're going to specify a buffer that you may not always full up, then it doesn't make sense for you to allocate all the memory up front and never and probably not use it. So again, it's going to depend on your application, or how you see your application being used. And the best thing to do is either know your application up front or test it. Just implement and put some counters as we have done into a write counter and see just how many times you write or often do you get close to the size of your capacity. Maybe you're far less and maybe you can allocate a, a mem store with less so anyway that's beyond this class or the series so um we're not talking performance on algorithms anyway all right so write seems to be okay let's do read so again if it is not open we can't read so close pipe and of course um our read stuff should still work fine so we're gonna be able to copy out the stuff and what we can copy copy out we're going to return error accordingly and end the file. So we don't need to change anything else with our read. Um, reset um, here, if again, if it's not open, right, um, we can't reset it. And um, because we don't want to reset on something that's closed. And of course, when we reset, our we chain it is our read offset. That's all we're trying to reset is where you could read from. Because write takes care of itself by calculating the correct place to write is the read that we're trying to um, reset. And we don't have to affect is open because we're not resetting whether that's open or not. So it seems like if we have uh, fixed all of our functions, um, we didn't implement the size function. Ooh. Um, so I think we're supposed to have a is closed and size. I don't see, oh yes, those are right here. So um, that's fine. So those are okay. So those don't get changed. You can always call those and it would return um, thing. All right, um, we're, yes, there's one other one that we're supposed to have is open or is closed. Um, so that's closed and close the thing. Oh yeah, we don't have a, a is closed. Well, um, since we have a, well, we can go either way. We can continue with our is open or is closed. Um, since our operation here has, have, um, hmm, we don't have it here either. We don't have is closed here either. So. Um, is is closed, um, and so this is going to return a boolean, and so one of the things I, I'm going to opt for is open instead. So it just makes it much easier for us to just return and say func 
um, you know, receiver, mem store, and then is open, and then return. So boolean return r that is open, right? And so that's easier than me having to do not of it to, in order to return is closed. So um, I'm changing things a little bit, um, and so. I'll adjust the slides accordingly. All right, so this seems to be it. Now we just have to go sort of um, here and I think we're good. We should be able to run this now and test it. Now, if we try to run this now, um, we should see what, um, we have a mem store, we try to write into it. And if I put this error message up here instead, and um, I try to write to my mem store, and I say n is equals to n comma error is equals to this, and then I try to print out error message fmt that print lin um, and an error. We're gonna see that um, it should fail, okay? And so let me go here. Oh, notice our package end up there for ten. Okay, and now um, I'm gonna run the code, and we can see zero IO um, read uh, write on closed pipe, and that's exactly what we expected. And we print out our mem store. There's nothing there. End of stream. No more data to read. Again, um, you know, we um, this is our message at the end. Um, so is not nil. I guess we should print out whatever. This error messages so we can do err okay if we, if we get an error all right and so let's run it again and see close pipe we try to read again from a close pipe okay so to fix that let's go in here between here and do m that open and let's say we're going to open it to store you know i don't know just so this we want us to write like ten things. Um, I don't know. The last write is is um, let's do let's move this up a bit. So we're gonna do open and we're gonna open it with seven bytes. And so this is insufficient for the number of things we want to write because we want to write you know six bytes and then we want to write another four bytes or whatever. Um, so one of them, this should fail, all right? This write should fail. And so I'm going to copy this and put it here. And we should see that the first one succeed and then the second one is tell us that oh, it cannot write over four bytes. Because remember, the way we have chosen to implement this is that if there's not enough space, we don't write any and we turn that out insufficient or whatever, right? Short write that error message. And so if we run this, we should see just that short write, right? So we write our six bytes byte successfully, and then because we only have seven bytes defined for a buffer, we can write the rest. Again, you might choose to implement that you're gonna write one byte and then say short write, because it's still less than how much was required, was specified, right? So zero is less than four, and so is one less than four also. So both ways would be fine. I just like the idea that if we know we can't accept all of it, Thing. For some things, it might make sense to get as much, if you're writing to a socket, for example, if you can write all of it, whatever you can write, you can send, you're going to write it because the next time you're going to write the rest. Okay, so it's not always all or nothing. So depending on the application again. All right, so I think that's a good place to wrap up this video without it being too long. We've um, enhanced our uh, mem store object and what we, we did was we use all the information we've learned so far about the standard errors and of course the IO interface, you know, read and write, the two primary interfaces I would say for that, um, that package. And we've implemented something that we can continue to test for. So in the next video, for example, we're going to look at using this IO, um, that copy function. And there are a few others that we're going to play with, but this is going to be the next one we're going to look at. And we're going to see how we can use this in some of the stuff that we have already and see if it really worked for us. So that's just a little peek into the next um, section. Okay, thanks for your time. Very much appreciate it. And thanks for spreading the word um, to your friends and family or whoever you've been tell you have been telling. And thanks for doing the thumbs up. Again, please continue to do the thumbs up on the video. 
and see you in the next video. Take care. Have a great day.